India's economic revolution has barely touched the state of Bihar in the north. Bihar is one of the poorest states in the country. There are an estimated 12 million households without electricity. The state also has an unenviable reputation for lawlessness, with kidnapping still common. For three years, Husk Power Systems has been lighting the darkness of Bihar's forgotten villages by burning the waste left over from rice milling and using the gas to generate electricity. Gayanesh Pandey is Husk Power's CEO. He's traveling to Bihar to check on some of the 50 Husk Power plants his company has installed. It used to be crazy bad. I mean, people wouldn't walk on the streets like 4.35 in the evening. You know, a lot of people, kids, that they, they have to discontinue their studies. It used to be really, really bad. I mean, extreme lawlessness. Bihar's staple crop is rice. Pandey grew up in Bihar, so he knows the region well. He was convinced that by providing electricity, he could radically improve life for the villagers. And his choice of fuel was a waste product that could be found everywhere, rice husk. Today, they are much better as compared to as little as five, five and a half years ago. If you compare the grandfathers from father's outlook, it's not really that different. But if you compare fathers from sons, it's just so different. I mean, the son feels so much more as a part of the world, the bigger world, and a lot of it goes to electricity. When harvested from the fields, rice is still covered by its protective sheath, or husk. Farmers take their rice to a mill to remove the husk, leaving just the edible kernel. The husk used to be discarded. Pandey's big idea was to build what he describes as the husk reactor, a practical, low-cost generator where the filtered gas is burned to provide power. As more and more villages adopted the husk reactor, incredibly, the byproduct became so valuable, mill owners stopped charging farmers for milling their rice. Before Husk Power Systems purchased the husk from us, we used to charge the farmers money for rice dehusking. Now, due to competition from other mills and the money from selling the husk, we make the rice milling free of cost to the farmer. As Pandey arrives in Bihar for his first inspection, he's followed closely by the monsoon rains. There's the hopper out there. They, we put the rice husk in the hopper which goes into the reactor, and uh, what happens inside the reactor is a controlled burning of the rice husk, which uh, produces the gas. The gas is pulled from the reactor. It's filtered in these three filters, and uh, then it's injected into the engine, which drives an alternator. And whenever there is motion inside a magnetic field, there is production of electricity. Husk Power Systems now has 250 full-time staff. Dupika Daimari is the director for plant operations. She's also on an inspection visit to the recently installed Daunaha village plant to check on progress. On examining the paperwork, the figures reveal an unusual surge in power usage, and she knows that can mean only one thing. Someone is stealing it. Figures are good. There is one particular phase in which there's a lot of fault occurring. So I think there's a lot of theft occurring in that phase as well. Individual users are charged a flat fee for a fixed level of electricity supply. So if there is a major surge, then someone is tapping into it. There's something which we need to control, theft. Because of theft, the load on the machine increases and it affects the machine health a lot, adversely, quite adversely. Back at Budarwa village, Gayanesh Pandey has found that the path of a World Challenge finalist is not always smooth. He's discovered another theft. This time, it's electricity cables that have gone missing. All right, let's, let's go and try to find this guy who's been stealing our cables. Theft of electricity and hardware like cables can amount to 30% of turnover, so it's vital to confront it and stamp it out as soon as possible. There he is. Let's see what he has to say. 
Pandey decides to confront the suspect. But here in Bihar, the division between theft and, well, borrowing something without authorization is blurred. This is uh, Shiv Shah. He is a guy who has stolen our cable. He is he keeps contending that he didn't steal it, he just took it. He just refusing to accept that what he did was latent stealing. He thinks that, you know, it, the camel was just there, he took it. Look, this is what we found. It's only worth around 12 or 1300 rupees. Shusha is willing to make amends and returns the stolen cable. Pandey hopes that by exposing him, others will be persuaded to leave company property alone. Despite hiccups like this, Pandey says Husk Power Systems is doing well. With more and more communities asking for their own power plants, he can barely keep up with the demand. Another four are due to be commissioned this month, bringing the total to 50 systems serving 200 villages. That's 20,000 households or 100,000 people. I decided to install this light because before I only had a kerosene lamp and my children couldn't study as it wasn't bright enough. Now I can also run fans, TV and charge my cell phone. The light provided by the husk reactors has proved a boon for local businesses. Now shops are brightly lit and can stay open as late as they like. Before, I had battery lights, but now I can extend my opening time by two or three hours and my sales have increased. It's saving me at least two rupees per hour. I used to spend around five rupees per hour with the generator, now it costs just three rupees an hour. Dr. Ved Prakash Yadav, an early customer of Husk Power Systems, is a big fan. I pray to God that Husk Power Systems go as far as possible because the kind of impact they've had on this society already could be a precedent for something really big. So I hope it continues to evolve. What we are essentially trying to do is use the backbone of power to empower a lot of underprivileged people. And we need a lot of help. Winning the World Challenge will definitely provide a good deal of that. Husk Power Systems now has the World Challenge platform to appeal directly for your vote. In less than three years, we've been able to reach more than 100,000 people, 150 villages. We believe that it's a revolution we are leading, and uh, we really need a lot of encouragement, support, and help from the world beyond us. And winning the world challenge will definitely provide us just the right amount of all these elements.